I recently cut some aquamarine for Bulpy, and here are the links to the videos to those stones. At that time, I was trying to cut one larger emerald shape or rectangular shaped aquamarine. Unfortunately, that piece of rough was odd shaped, and I had to trim it to make two stones a little bit smaller than one larger stone. In this video, I'm going to show you one way to try to examine the inside piece of gemstone rough uh, to look for cracks or inclusions. And I'm going to show you how I used a trim saw to cut one piece of rough into more pieces of rough. I'm pretty sure you can guess that, once again, the piece of aquamarine rough that I have selected is not perfect and I will have to, once again, turn one piece of rough into two pieces and cut two smaller gemstones instead of one large gemstone. Aquamarine comes in a variety of color shades from very, very light blue all the way through to a deeply saturated ocean blue. The aquamarine in my previous two videos was a nicely saturated shade of blue, but this piece of rough I have now is even a little bit better, and it's called double blue, or some people say blue blue. Double blue or blue blue, it's a darker, more saturated color of blue aquamarine. The value of aquamarine increases as the color becomes darker and the least expensive aquamarine is the very very light blue almost clear in color and then prices go up as it gets more blue. So this gemstone is a very nice shade of blue. For our piece of blue blue aquamarine we want to make sure to do the best job we can of looking inside of these stones. So we're going to use Refractol, which is almost impossible to find now, uh, but it has the pretty much the same refractive index as quartz, not exactly the same refractive index as beryl, which our aquamarine is, but hopefully close enough. So we'll immerse our stone into the Refractol and hopefully be able to see into the stone. zoom in there okay so because of the refractol we can now see that right there there's a veil right there goes through the stone completely through it completely across it so if we cut anything bigger than going out to here this veil is going to show up in the final stone it will not be internally flawless other than that there doesn't appear to be any any major inclusions i don't see any black spots i don't see any crystals i don't see any major problems but that veil we're going to have to look at that and make a design that accounts for that veil and trim this stone. We're gonna end up with two stones if we want a flawless stone we're gonna have to deal with that internal problem with the stone right there and that's that's the purpose of refractol so this is refractol okay bubble rock out of saginaw michigan hasn't been in business in decades or at least more than a decade it's again almost impossible i think it's all been sold out of the market was able to pick up a bottle an extra bottle earlier this year from the one dealer that I know that still has it. Uh, his website is kind of broken. You can't order through the website, uh, but you can see some things. You have to call. It's John Frankie. Um, he, the last time I talked to him, still had a couple of bottles left. He told me that he had bought out the distributor years ago of the last refractal that the distributor had. So as of now, he has had one or two bottles left, just a couple. I haven't found anywhere else in the world where it's still available. There are some new mixtures of something called something like refractol. It's not called refractol, it's something else, but it's close. I, I don't think it's as good in my opinion as refractol, but other people do. There's also cinnamon oil, winter green oil, different types of oils that have a different refractive index that depending on the stone uh, you may use. Cinnamon oil is a bit darker, so it's not clear, but it works okay. Some people just use uh, oil, put a piece of oil on the stone to see inside of it. Some people use water, whatever works, but that's refractol. 
Okay, the trim saw I use is from Ameritools, and the way I use it is you take off the cover. I use a sintered blade, which has uh, diamonds embedded in it, so when the first layer gets ground down, the next layer is exposed. I put water in the uh, reservoir just so it covers the very bottom of the blade so that it, as it's rotating it picks up water to cool it. That's all you need. And we're set to cut. Okay, for our blue blue aquamarine, I trimmed off the piece. There was a veil running completely through the stone. So I trimmed it and I have a nice little trim piece. Probably get a, I don't know, nine, 10 millimeter round out of it. That was nice instead of grinding it off. Now I'll put our bigger piece of blue blue aquamarine on the top. This is a piece of blue blue or double blue aquamarine that I'm gonna cut into the mistress design by Jeff Graham. I'll start with the uh, 320 or 360 and then move to the 600. Based on the shape of this piece of rough, I've decided that a square or princess shaped gemstone design would work best. So I've selected a gem design called Mistress by the late Jeff Graham. And here's what Mistress should look like from the top, the side, and the bottom when I'm finished cutting and polishing this gemstone. Jeff Graham shared this design with his fellow gem cutters and it is in the public domain for you to freely use. In fact, this design was selected by the United States Fasteners Guild as one of the designs to cut in the 2005 single stone gem cutting competition. Here are the instructions for cutting this design. Jeff shared about three dozen of his favorite designs with his fellow gem cutters by putting those designs into the public domain. And I showed you in a previous video how to access those designs from the web. Uh, here's the video where I should walk you through step by step how to access all the designs that Jeff released into the public domain. Okay, I finished pre-polishing the pavilion of our aquamarine and the P3 facets, which are these right here, this one and this one on each face there's two P3 facets these little facets right here with the 3000 grit diamond on the bat lap that's the first time I, I touched those so you don't want to like when you're using the 320 or, or 600 you don't want to try to cut those facets because they cut really fast it's almost almost as if you're going to wait till the very end and polish them in so now we're ready to uh, polish our stone and we'll use the dark side with uh, cerium oxide. All right, to polish our aquamarine mistress, uh, I'm gonna use cerium oxide, although I have a lot, uh, probably a lifetime supply of cerium oxide powder, which takes just a tiny bit. Um, I've been experimenting with our cerium oxide bat stick from Gear Loose and I think I've got it working now. So I'm gonna use that. It's kind of like I said, it's kind of like a Crayola crayon. It has a sharpener that cuts off the plastic even, exposing more of it. So the way I've been doing it, which is working, I don't know that this is the way I'll always do it. It may change in the future, but for now, I rotate the disc, it's slightly uh, wet, and just put the, uh, Cerium oxide bat stick on the disc, on the lap, and I set a slow drip. On our water, I set the uh, index gear where it's needed based on the instructions. Bring in our drip tank, which is dripping slightly. I use a, just a piece of paper to clean off the uh, stone 
and let's see how we did. Okay, this is the uh, maximum zoom uh, without putting some macro lenses on. So this big, bigger V, bigger tent, I guess, tent shaped facet is the one we just faceted. These have not been faceted and this one is now polished. You can see there's no scratches when I bring it up to the light. So whereas compared to these, you can see the scratch there. So these are not, these are 3000 polished and this one we just polished with the, uh, the bat lap, the uh, dark side lap with uh, cerium oxide bat stick. So it's working fine and that's all it takes to polish it because we did a good pre-polish with our 3000 grit diamond on a bat lap. So I'll finish polishing the uh, pavilion of the stone. I have finished polishing the bottom half or pavilion of our aquamarine and now I will transfer the dot to cut the top half or the crown of the stone. Okay, to transfer our stone so that we can cut the crown, we I get the pretty much the same size top for the bottom as I use for the top. I use a small piece of modeling clay to go in the very bottom of our cone-shaped top, just to so that the super glue, and I'm gonna use super glue because it's a smaller stone, the super glue will adhere at with the uh, modeling clay. You could use a wadded up piece of tissue paper. You know, anything will work. Um, just so that it, if you have, when you pull the dop off the stone, if you put any pressure on it, you don't break the very pointy part to cure it. Some cutters don't do that. Maybe you don't need to. I've had a problem before, so I do use it. I knew no other cutters would do. It's up to you. Um, and again, I'm gonna use super glue. I used Loctite. 404. I put the month, I write the month on the bottle, keep the bottle in the refrigerator. One drop into the cone at the bottom of our transfer jig. Push the top onto the bottom. Tighten it up. Make sure that there's some glue on the stone as well as the top. And you may need to turn the transfer jig over to get everything to set properly, but you may not need to, it depends. If you're using a lot of epoxy, usually I do, until it sets up, the super glue sets up faster than epoxy in just a few seconds, the super glue sets up. And that's the transfer. You know, pretty quick rundown of what I've showed you in other videos. So I'll let that set overnight and I'll work on another stone and then come back and uh, remove the top dop and start cutting on the crown. Finished polishing the upper part or crown of our aquamarine. Uh, the stone's called, the design is called Mistress. Now I need to polish the table. Uh, very little space again, because I used the uh, width to height ratio from the instructions. I made sure I just had enough room for the table. I've got just enough, so I'll probably use, I'll probably start with the 3000 grit diamond on a bat lap and then polish. I won't use anything rougher because I have very little space, but I have just enough. So I'll set the stone, my, I'll set the Alter Tech up for the, to polish and cut, cut and polish the table. I've already removed the, the brass set screw that is in here. And it goes right in your Alter Tech so you don't lose it sits right there then you use these two tools that come with your alter tech this one and this one some people only use this one you can do that what you do is you need a 90 degree angle so we set our alter tech at 45 degrees this makes the index and the spindle at 45 degree angle and when you slide in this tool at 45 degrees that makes it so that when the stone fit or the dot fits in here, that'll be a 90 degrees to do your table. So for now, you use this tool and put it in here and put it in. And that allows you to make sure it's flat so there's no sideway uh, wobble on your equipment. Again, some people uh, do it this way. 
they just use this one tool and they run it down so that it fits they run the uh, in the machine down so that this fits on your flat surface like so you can do it that way but that only gives you this much space the width of this whereas if you use this adapter you have more space on that much more space on your flat surface and what I do the more space you have on your surface the less likely you are to be out of alignment I turn it sideways which gives me even more space it gives me this much space to make sure I'm even even less likely to be out of alignment so with your machine at 45 degrees and these two pieces of equipment in there these two tools you tighten the two set screws for that tool remove the second tool and you put in your dot some people say put it in as far as possible I put it in where the right there where the dot is the right size I don't go any further sometimes I get a squeal and and some cutter said that was because I needed to make the dop further up and then I tried that and it didn't make any difference I still occasionally get a squeal I think the squeal when you get a squeal and you're you're polishing your table I think it means you don't have enough lubricant either water or oil whatever you're using on your uh, surface so we're now set up to polish the table of our mistress. Okay, the other thing that I do, that I've changed the way I do is um, when I am polishing the table, what I always used to do was try to find a way to get my finger in there to hold the stone. And when I'm cutting other than the table, I normally like having my finger on the stone, touching the stone, holding, kind of like feels like it gives me more control to hold the stone in place. However, I've changed that with the table and I don't generally put my finger on the stone, especially with smaller stones where it's hard to get in there. I, I use the uh, handle. So other people, we did kind of an informal survey and it looked like about 50-50 among the fasters. 50% absolutely want their finger on the stone and 50% are fine with uh, the handle so do it any way you want I, for years I always had my finger in the stone and I've changed that so it's up to you but again it's about 50 50 finished polishing the table on our aquamarine and I use the dark side lap by gear loose with uh, the serum oxide I used the bat stick from gear loose as well I haven't had any problems polishing this uh, aquamarine, which is barrel, with the dark side. I haven't had any problem with any of the barrels so far. A couple of stones I had a problem with. I, I, for some reason, I just recently cut this uh, parachute design into uh, a lavender quartz. And uh, the dark side uh, gave me problems. I don't know why. So I switched to uh, the uh, Spectrum Ultralapse that I've used to use before I got my dark side and they worked great for the lavender quartz don't know why uh, it works the, the dark side works great on citrine it works great on amethyst um, and those are those are quartz so I don't know why I had a problem with uh, my lavender quartz but I did all right I'll soak this stone in acetone and remove the uh, super glue and then we'll weigh it and measure it and send it off to Popey Okay, what I use to remove the super glue from the dop uh, is acetone, and I put it in a, I now put it in a uh, pill, I guess we're calling them pill bottles, I guess, although they're plastic. So, and what happens is you set it in there overnight, and almost all the time in the morning when you come back, you see the stone has fallen off the, the dot, just like it's supposed to. And this would we'll fish our stone out here in a minute. So I don't use virtually any acetone anymore. I mean, it's just this, this amount does not evaporate from the pill jars I, like you would, I would have thought it would, it just doesn't. What I used to use was just a uh, 
you know, strawberry preserve jar glass. And one of the problems I always had was the acetone would eat through whatever plastic was on the inside of the lid. And so I couldn't get a good seal and then the acetone would always evaporate and I'd be left with uh, some dried, discolored stuff in the bottom of my jars. And, and it's glass. I mean, I, I'd rather have my stone bumping up against plastic than glass. So that's the upgrade I made. Uh, whatever works best for you, you, you go ahead and use. Whatever you like, do it. There's different ways to do everything. But that, that's for me, the plastic uh, pill bottle works better. I'm still not exactly sure why the acetone doesn't eat through this plastic. I don't know what we make our pill bottles out of, but acetone can't eat it. Overall, Mistress is an easy design to cut and polish, and even a brand new gem cutter could cut this design. Why don't you go ahead and give it a try? Enjoy. Happy fastening, everyone.